Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the Land Acquisition Breakout Session. Today we will be discussing several things, including project types, waivers, ready-to-go items, budget formatting, and post-award requirements. My name is Liz Clark, and I am a project manager at the Bureau of Recreation and Conservation. I am one of three project managers within the Land Conservation and Stewardship section. The other two project managers are Ashley Rebert, our section chief, and Dan Pierce. There are two acquisition project types that an organization may apply for, community recreation projects and critical habitat and open space projects. Community recreation may provide land for a local or regional park, enhance water access, or provide open space within a community. Critical habitat open space projects often provide landscape connectivity, improved habitat for plant and animal species. These projects are also integral in protecting our water resources. Eligible applicants for our acquisition grants include municipalities, counties, state agencies, and pre-qualified land trusts. If you are unsure if your organization is an approved pre-qualified land trust, please contact your regional advisor and they will assist you. If you will be putting earnest money down per your sales agreement or settling on your project prior to the grant contract start date, you will need an approved waiver for retroactivity prior to incurring those costs. While not a guarantee of an award, an approved waiver will change your project start date to the day that your waiver was received by DCNR. This will allow for earnest money deposits and settlement costs to be considered eligible as they will now fall within the grant contract period. To request a waiver, you must do so by letter. The request must include pertinent information about the project, including what specific rights are to be acquired, project timeline, a map of your proposed acquisition, the acreage, and remember that you only need a waiver to cover earnest money or settlement expenses. You don't need a waiver if you are only incurring eligible expenses like appraisals and surveys. Either way, it is best to contact your regional advisor for their advice prior to requesting a waiver for retroactivity. When applying for an acquisition grant, it will be important to first determine if your project is ready to go, as projects that are not ready to go will not be considered for funding. Next, we are going to go down through all of the items listed on the slide. First, you will need to make sure that your project has enough secured match. Acquisition projects require a dollar-to-dollar -dollar match. If you are requesting a $100,000 grant from DCNR, you will need $100,000 in secured cash match. The only allowable non-cash match is donated land value. Donated parcels that are being used as match will require the same documentation as the project acquisition parcel. If you plan on using donated land value as match, it is very important to discuss your project budget with your regional advisor prior to applying for a grant. The first expense is the land easement purchase cost. The land purchase cost indicated on the budget for an acquisition grant is either the appraised value or the purchase price, whichever is less. For instance, if your parcel is appraised for $100,000 but your sales agreement is for $110,000, the land purchase cost on your application budget should reflect the $100,000 appraised value. The second expense is eligible costs. DCNR may pay for up to 50% of all eligible costs, including appraisal and technical review, survey, some legal fees associated with the parcel, title policy, settlement costs, and DCNR signage. Some ineligible costs that will not be reimbursed are costs for negotiations, subdivisions, seller's settlement costs, stewardship fees, building demolitions, and mineral reports. It is also important to note that the cost of the first appraisal will not be considered eligible if the technical review determines significant errors and a second appraisal is required. This is also a good time to address the land value for a project. Many times, a property is negotiated on prior to having a survey completed. While this is perfectly fine, the timing can raise some issues down the road. For instance, if the property you are looking to acquire is appraised at $100,000 and the appraiser is basing the value off of an estimated acreage, in this case we'll say 10 acres, the organization would likely submit an application for $100,000 of the land purchase costs. Let's say in this scenario the project is funded. After receiving the award, your organization orders a survey on the property, and in this case the survey finds the acres changes by more than 10%. This may impact the final eligible approved land value at closeout. For this reason, we recommend that, if at all possible, 
the organization negotiates sale price based on an appraised per acre value. We are now going to go over a budget example. For this example, there is a land value of $100,000 and a donated parcel of $50,000. This budget also includes $20,000 in eligible expenses. With that, we have a total project cost of $170,000. Since the donated parcel land value is $50,000, the grantee will need to have cash for the rest of the match in the amount of $35,000. That equals $85,000, half the total project costs. DCNR will cover the other half of the project costs, which would be $85,000. You can also see there are several budget examples that we provide with our budget template. Please use whichever template is appropriate for your project. You will need to use our templates for your budget to be accepted. Too many times we see applicants address a project's needs, benefits, and urgencies in the brief project description section in the portal application. If you give us information in the scope that should be addressed in the criteria questions, it is possible that important project details could be overlooked by a reviewer. So keep your project description very brief. Always include the acres, municipality, county, and goal for the acquisition. Your application must include a detailed description of negotiations that your organization has had with the landowner. If you are not currently under contract to purchase the property, please describe why your project is ready to go. It is important that you be as detailed as possible. Please include benchmark dates and your project's estimated timeline. It is important to know what rights are being acquired prior to having the property appraised, as DCNR will only reimburse a grantee for those rights that are actually acquired. For conservation easements, there are a few important details to keep in mind. DCNR will only fund the highest protection area of a conservation easement. Applicants will need to upload a map that clearly defines the proposed protection areas as defined in the We Can Serve PA model conservation easement. The map should also include the proposed acreage of each of the three protection areas. Applicants must use the most recent We Can Serve PA model conservation easement or a conservation easement template that has been pre-approved by DCNR. If there is a current mortgage on the property to be eased, a subordination clause from the lien holder will be required. For both fee acquisitions and conservation easements, it is also important to detail in the application all existing leases, easements, and right-of-ways that currently exist on the property. The appraisal must meet the following criteria. The appraisal must be completed by a PA State Certified General Real Estate Appraiser. It must be ordered and prepared for the applicant. It must include DCNR as an intended user of the report. It must be completed no more than one year prior to the application deadline. It must include separate values for land and improvements as DCNR will not reimburse for building values. It must use a before and after valuation for conservation easements. It is important that both the applicant and their appraiser both read the BRC appraisals policy prior to contracting for an appraisal. When considering the value of specific rights for a property, such as timber value or mineral rights, the appraiser must include these as a percentage of the overall land value, not as a separate valuation. In other words, the property must be valued as a whole, with due consideration of all of the components that make up its value. Each separate right is considered only in how it enhances or diminishes the value of the whole. This avoids cumulative or summary appraisals. Building envelopes and building values are normally not eligible for funding assistance through our grant program. There are some exceptions to this. If there are buildings on site, make sure the value is separate from the land value in the appraisal report and work with your regional advisor to determine the building's future use and also prior to contracting any appraisal or boundary surveys. If DCNR agrees to the building being included in the acquisition project, additional documents will be required. We have covered all of the ready-to-go requirements, which account for 15 of the total 100 available points an application can receive. The remaining 85 available points on an acquisition application can be earned by answering the project criteria questions. These questions were already covered in the main workshop presentation, so I will only elaborate where there are specific acquisition-related differences. At 25 total points, the needs, benefits, and urgencies question accounts for the largest available points in your application. 
This is your opportunity to tell us what sets your project apart from the rest. You will want to spend considerable time making sure you fully answer this question. Public access is worth five points. Please address not only if the public will have access to the property, but how much access they will have. You may want to consider adding details about planned or existing trails, parking, or other access related to the property. For community recreation projects acquired by a municipality, county, or state agency, public access is required. For critical habitat and open space projects acquired by a pre-qualified land trust, public access is not required, but it is strongly encouraged. If public access is limited or restricted due to sensitive habitat or another reason, please make sure to fully describe this in your application. The level of public involvement is also worth five points. For community recreation projects acquired by a municipality, county, or state agency, public involvement is critical. Make sure to include a description of how the public has been involved in the acquisition process to date, if there have been any public meetings, and detail any support or opposition to the project. For critical habitat and open space projects acquired by a pre-qualified land trust, public involvement may look a little different. You will still want to detail all public involvement along with support and opposition to the project. You may also want to include how your land trust engages to the public through its outreach and volunteerism. Next, you will be asked how your project promotes climate resiliency and green and sustainable practices. This question is worth 10 points. To receive the maximum points, you will need to detail how your acquisition project will promote climate resiliency and incorporate green and sustainable practices. Please reference our climate resilience guidance document. Some things to consider. Does your project protect or create a riparian forested buffer? Does your project plant native trees or address invasive species removal? Does your project protect headwaters? Does your project include future plans for green infrastructure? Or maybe your project protects migrant corridors for plant and animal species. Whatever it is that sets your project apart from other land acquisition projects, be sure to let us know. You can receive up to 15 points for answering the question of how your project will promote the State Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, or SCORP for short. While this was discussed during the main presentation, I want to point out that the acquisition priorities for the SCORP are landscape connectivity, diverse ecological and geological traits, provide access in high need areas, and provides access to water. The next five points can be earned for detailing the plans for your project's operation, maintenance, and stewardship. This is important as acquisition projects are protected in perpetuity and must be properly maintained and stewarded. To receive the full points, you will need to upload a project-specific operations, maintenance, and stewardship plan to the application. The final 20 points are earned by listing the relevant local, county, and regional plans to your project and by listing your project partners. When listing project partners, even if they were listed throughout the application, please also be sure to include them in the partner section as well. If you upload partner support letters, they must also be listed in the partner section of the application. We do check that any partners listed in the section also has a letter uploaded in the application. For the plan section, the SCORP should not be listed as one of your relevant plans. It is important to carefully read and answer all of the criteria questions and include as many project-specific details as possible. Should you be awarded, you will be eligible to request a payment for 50% of your grant award as soon as you receive your contract. To receive up to 90% of your grant award prior to closing, you will need to provide the following items. Title commitment and title policy, technical review appraisal or a second appraisal, a boundary survey, GIS shape files of the parcel, recorded deed with a non-conversion language, settlement statement, and a funding acknowledgement sign. Now I'm going to review two of these post-award requirements in more detail. You will be asked to contract for a technical review of the appraisal that you provided with your application. This is a desk review that looks for deficiencies in the original appraisal and is completed by a separate PA State Certified General Appraiser. It is important that both the grantee and their technical review appraiser both read the BRC requirements for property appraisals policy prior to contracting for a technical review appraisal. As noted before, the cost of the first appraisal will not be considered eligible if the technical review determines significant errors and a second appraisal is required. 
Having a boundary survey completed that clearly delineates where the property is located on the ground is a necessary first step in the perpetual stewardship of the DCNR funded property. The boundary survey will need to do the following. Locate existing monuments as well as those that were set. Locate any existing easements or right-of-ways. Confirm acreage of the subject parcel. The survey is for a conservation easement. It must confirm total acreage as well as the acreage for each of the three protection areas. The surveyor will also need to provide a narrative or description of the property and GIS shapefiles. It is important that both the grantee and their surveyor read the BRC Boundary Surveys and Title Work Policy prior to contracting for the boundary survey. And lastly, an acquisition grant comes with perpetual stewardship. Consider the short-term and long-term use of the property early in the acquisition process. Plan for future leadership that may have a different use in mind for the property. If a possible future use exists to use the property or a portion of it for non-recreation use, carve that portion of the property out by defining it on the boundary survey. If a building exists, consider a buffer area to allow for expansion. Land acquisitions can be complicated. Our Bureau of Recreation and Conservation Regional staff are there to help you. Please reach out to them early in the process as they are happy to advise you on specific application questions. You should also invite your regional advisors out to see the property in person. These visits are often crucial in helping us understand the benefits of your proposed acquisition. All of the policies and documents mentioned in this presentation are available on the DCNR grant portal website and at dcnr.pa.gov. Thank you for your time and interest in the C2P2 program, and we look forward to seeing your application in April.